hip hip tally ho, Jules Guides here. It's a beautiful day for a nice stroll on Primrose Hill, I think. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how every time there's a slight covering of snow in this country, the whole world <laughs> draws to a standstill. None of the rubbish has been collected this morning. All the schools are closed. I mean, it must be the laughing stock. I know that in Estonia, if it's below minus 30, then you don't have to go to school. So basically, if it's minus 29 degrees, then they still have to go to school. In this country, everything completely draws to a standstill. But it's a funny thing, when it snows, on a day like this and no one goes to work, everyone is suddenly very friendly to each other. London becomes a completely different place. Morning. Be careful. Look at everybody happy in the snow. Well, how about I make a video about London in the snow? I'll go around with a camera. London, a city of change, contrast and resilience against foreign invaders. Londoners are a welcoming people. But this spring, one uninvited guest presumed to test their resolve. Snow. Piccadilly Circus, the stone village green of London. Take your girl out to buy a handbag or an enormous limousine. You start from here. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to see the Queen. Sentries present arms and visitors present cameras, but it's too cold for Her Majesty to go out today. The Royal Ensign indicates the Queen is at home. Monuments and stone heroes like Nelson, museums and galleries and tall erections, buildings at the heart of a nation. Get the thumbs up from us. Ships, towers, domes, theatres and temples lie, open unto the fields and to the sky. The Duke of Wellington, unflustered by the snow on his private parts. That's why they call him the Iron Duke. One of the first jewels guides I ever made was down these alleyways. It's because this is where the stock market all started up, in all the coffee houses around here. But the real reason I really like coming down here is because just up here is where Ebenezer Scrooge has his counting house in a courtyard off Cornhill, beneath the shadow of a church whose gruff old bell was always peeping down at Scrooge through a window in the wall. So they say that that's almost certainly this courtyard here. And I feel like, I feel a little bit like Bob Cratchit because when he gives him the day off, uh, for, he says, oh, I suppose you'll be wanting the day off tomorrow, or it being Christmas and all. And uh, he's so happy, Bob Cratchit, that he runs out into Cornhill, which is the street over there, and the children have been making a slide, and he slides down it just for the joy of it. And uh, then he runs back home to Camden Town, across the fields. Well, I won't be running across fields to Camden Town, but I shall certainly be heading up that way <laughs> if the trains are running. It feels so Dickensian being down here in the snow, and um, Charles Dickens certainly used to drink at the Georgian Vulture here, and he, he, he mentions it in uh, the Pickwick Papers, where the hero is being sued for breach of promise by his landlady, and um, goes for his usual melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, which is most likely Simpsons over here because this was ancient, even at that time. Easy. No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's on camera. The pressure. <laughs> the pressure. That is more like it. The ancient River Thames, ever changing like a noble theme through London, past the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Abbey, even Big Ben is wearing its overcoat as Churchill looks on, helpless this time against the beast from the east, as this weather is being called. But Gandhi, resolute as ever, who so often ruffled the feathers of Parliament. Now is the winter of our discontent, as Shakespeare's globe is covered in snow, and peanut sellers keep warm over their barrow. Which is more than can be said for this girl. Oh my god, you're not even wearing socks. No, no socks, no. <laughs> so, yeah, we're <I'm> silly. <laughs> Fashion is more important than... Exactly. <laughs> in the old days, it was quite common for the river to actually to freeze over, and they used to have things called frost fairs. Even King Charles II came down to attend one of these frost fairs, and they'd have ice skating, market stalls would be set up, and it doesn't happen anymore, because for starts, we don't have as cold winters, but also, since they narrowed the river, also they changed London Bridge. It doesn't have any arches in it anymore. Um, the river flows a lot more quickly, so doesn't frost over so often. Actually, I'd just like to point out at this stage that I am now filming in exactly the same place that I was filming for my uh, London Pass video when the Beef Eater came running out of the Tower of London and had a massive go at me for filming. No filming here, he said. But uh, funnily enough, I don't see anybody complaining about it today. On the majestic steps of St Paul's, Londoners have an hour for lunch. 
and can relieve themselves in one of the many public lavatories provided as the Snow Queen Anne, who united England and Scotland, looks on beneath the proud dome sailing in the sky. But kids, if you see a yellow snowman, don't play with it. The River Thames reflects the brooding centuries of history and the bright swirl of today, the excitement and pleasures of a great capital. I know what I need. A glass of sherry from Gordon's Wine Bar. Can I have a glass of sherry, please? Just a house sherry or whatever. That'll do. Long arms. They come in handy. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks for watching. I'm going to thaw out. Uh, but if you enjoy my films, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, have a look at some of my other videos. And if you'd like a guided tour of London, then just get in touch on my website, julesguides.com. Toodles.